This is chapter 3 of the Apocalypse Awakening story, but it's probably not a bad place to start. If you haven't heard any of the other episodes, you can start with this taster and go back to those later if you so wish. The reason for that is because this is the beginning of a new character perspective. At the start I said this was kind of like Game of Thrones and that's where we see the biggest similarity. I follow multiple POVs or point of view characters in this story and while doing so I try a different style of narration to suit the character. I don't know if that's gonna go well, but if not, it'll just be another blunder in the telling of Apocalypse Awakening, an unconventional narration. Chapter 3 Farewell Party Where do you think you're going, girl? Quidel tightened his grip around Amelia's neck, pushing her further up the crumbling sand wall, lifting her feet off the ground. She struggled to suck in breath as her hearing went fuzzy, hands scrabbling uselessly against Quidel's forearm. He leant forward, spit flying into her face as he spoke. How did you get out of your cage? Amelia was vaguely aware of Quidel's spiky mohawk, shark finning at the bottom of her vision as her eyes rolled upwards, barely felt his hand pinning her arm to the wall. You've certainly grown, haven't you, girl? I told Salt if he couldn't let you get too big. We ought to have clipped your wings before you tried to fly away, like we should the others. I knew this would happen. He never listens to me. No one ever does. Quidel's grip loosened, allowing Amelia to squeeze in precious gulps of air. Able to focus her eyes again, hearing that bit better. I should be the one in charge here. You know that. You know that, don't you? Amelia knew Quidel wasn't asking her the question, ranting to himself as always. But she answered anyway. She was taking a risk, talking without permission. But she had to try. I yes she gasped in between breaths. What? Quidel asked, whipping his narrowed eyes back to hers, loosening his grip further. Did you say yes? Amelia paused, as if to speak, inhaling as much as she could. Well, what did- Amelia kicked upwards. Her right boot slammed into Quidel's crutch, immediately followed by her left. Quidel's eyes widened as he doubled over, Mohawk swishing down with his head, too pained to scream. His muscles clenched, trapping Amelia's dangling legs. They tumbled into a heap on the sandy floor. Amelia pushed away Quidel's arms and lunged for his face, throwing her fists at everything below the man's bright yellow hair. She didn't really know how to hit, but at least her aim was good. She whacked Quidel below the eye, cracked him on the side of the nose, and pummeled his jaw in quick, clumsy succession. Quidel held up his arms, meagerly defending his battered face. His legs loosened enough to let Amelia squirm free. What's going on down there? Amelia jumped to her feet, yanking the knife out of Quidel's belt pouch, and ran down the dark corridor, away from the new voice. She would have liked to see her handiwork on Quidel's face, but that would waste her one opportunity to escape. Her hands began to throb as she ran. She shouldn't have hit him so hard. She saw a bright spot ahead. Even in the middle of the night, the drunken cheers and blaring horns thundered over the trucks as they roared, trying to batter the other to pieces in the arena. Amelia had never seen much of the spectacle, always by his side, too scared to look up and attract attention. Amelia reached the end of the corridor, wrapped her hand on a rusted pipe and pivoted around the corner, launching herself down the hallway and nearly stabbing herself with Cadell's knife in the process. She bounded over the rough mix of sand and metal below her feet, knowing every second counted. The thick metal door at the bottom of the hall blocked her way. Amelia tapped. Three fast raps, followed by two slow ones, copying the knock she'd heard so many times before and wincing as her sore hands complained at the slightest abuse. The door opened and a pair of worried eyes and pursed lips peered out. Green. Amelia's chest quivered as she took in a deep breath. Of all the scum in the place, this timid man was one of the few who'd never tried laying a hand on her. She'd promised herself to go free with us no matter what. But why couldn't it have been someone else? You? Why are you- Amelia thrust the knife into Green's neck, 
The metal lodged firmly in his flesh, and she felt the scrape of bone jolt through the knife. Green fell back, eyes wide, pulling the door open with him. Amelia let the knife go as Green fell and wrapped her hand around the side of the swinging door. The door crunched her bruised hand against the metal frame. She managed to stifle her cry to a small whimper as pain rocketed through her right hand. At least she'd stopped the loud bang the door normally made. Amelia felt something weakly hit her leg. She looked down. Green's hand flailed against her foot, standing on his chest, the other struggling to grip the knife handle protruding from his neck. Amelia stepped back, avoiding the vacant expression beginning to form on Green's face as the life seeped out of him. She had seen enough of that look before. Sorry, she mumbled, hearing the pointlessness of the word as it came out. Amelia gritted her teeth, tears threatening to overwhelm her. She ignored the pain. Told herself she did anyway. Knew there'd be plenty of time for that later. Amelia reached down to pull the knife out of Green's neck. Found she couldn't. Frowning, and with both hands, she pulled harder. The blood which only seeped out before now began to spill in big black spurts. The serrated edges of Quidel's knife were making the removal an impossible task. Each tug loosed more blood as the blade bored a gaping black and red hole. Amelia was beginning to feel sorry for herself as well as Green, out of breath, bare hands and wrists soaked in warm blood. She gave another tug and her grip slipped as she fell onto her backside. Blood soaked into her ragged shorts from the puddle of gore. She smacked the floor in frustration and yelped as her sore hand spasmed. Should we shut down the match? A voice asked, floating through a grill built into the armory's wall. Are you joking? When my guy's winning, I'm not letting Quidel's sore nuts spread a panic. She's only a girl for fuck's sake. Amelia's stomach flipped. Sawtooth's voice. Those were his glorious words. They must have dragged him from the throne overlooking the arena. She should run to him so he could shield her, keep her safe from... No, she wouldn't be his much longer. The riders were coming, and once here, she'd be taken away from the only good thing in her life. She had to find something else to replace it, had to at least try especially now that she'd killed for it. Amelia glanced around the room, scanning the racks of blades, guns, and stacks of ammunition before landing on the shelf of pistols. She plucked the double-barreled blaster pistol from its depths. Her pistol. She clutched it to her chest and felt a warm relief spring forth from just holding the companion in her hand. The small handle and two oversized barrels, grooves and notches, wood and metal, fitted more naturally in her hands than anything else in the world. With the pistol back, she was whole again. Could fight, even without Sawtooth by her side. Amelia vowed this time that she would never let it go. The same vow she made every time the weapon was in her hands. The armory's open! Amelia spun back to the guns and grabbed the right holster. She buckled it to her shorts and slid the pistol into its familiar home on her hip. She ran to the far door, away from Green's leaking corpse, and carefully closed it behind her. Amelia thought she could make out faint scuffles coming from the armory as she began running. A few moments later, the alarm screamed. She's not in here. Did I fucking stutter? Fine, fine. Just make sure I don't get any further interruptions. Amelia hoped it was only dirt she smelt amongst the rubber as she strained to listen to the conversation. She watched Fuse's men filter out of the garage between the lines of spiked motorbikes, armoured cars and buggies, all branded with Sawtooth's red face symbol. She'd been hiding for nearly half an hour, waiting for the search party's inevitable sweep. Fuse was chatting to Rusk, taking so long Amelia was certain the oceans would reclaim the desert before he was finished. Amelia had spent so long locked away that she was normally good at waiting, but with the exit this close, her patience was quickly running out. Patience. That was a nice word. At least the piercing alarm had finally stopped, giving Amelia's ears some respite. The exits were one of the first places combed free when an alarm sounded, eager men jumping on the chance to find a runaway woman from the cells. Dirt bags, all of them. Apart from Sawtooth, of course. He was better than the scum he led. 
Fuse, wearing his backpack generator, was a particularly nasty brute, whose fascination with the effects of electricity on Amelia's body did not make for pleasant memories. She could only spend a few minutes alone with him before entering her shell. The big man grunted as he shifted his backpack. What are you working on? Fixing this bike first, Rusk replied, without looking up from his work. Then I'm going to start work on that haul truck. Amelia flattened herself as Fuse glanced her way. There was a pause. Large bloody truck. Sort of must have something big in mind. Oh, yes, Rusk replied in his typical monotone voice. There's plans to bring unity to the whole area with that massive peacekeeping vessel. Really? Fuse had never been good with sarcasm. Wasn't good at much other than electrocuting things. Rusk didn't bother to answer allowing Fuse to realise his own blunder. Whatever, Fuse snapped. Why are you working here so late? Good point. I love welding in the middle of a scorching day. Really brings out a shine in me. All right, save the sass for someone who gives a shit, Fuse said as he slung the shock rifle out of his backpack, cord trailing from the butt of the gun to the generator. Keep an eye out for the girl. Make sure you take her alive if she comes through here. Sawtooth was very keen on that. Same to you, Rusk said, deadpan again. Everyone knew Fuse took his targets alive. After all, it was harder to make the dead dance with his electric currents. Fuse grinned as he stalked out of the room, rifle drooping by his side. Rusk slid the round, tinted goggles back over his eyes and leant down to his work, back facing Amelia. He resumed the welding, flaring a lightning-bright arc. Amelia let out a long breath she didn't realise she'd been holding. She rose, wincing as her skin plucked free from the ridges of rubber. Her ratty t-shirt provided little protection against the massive grooves of the hull truck's wheel that had wedged themselves into her soft body. She slid from the top of the tyre, twice the height of a man, and dropped the last metre, landing with a thump onto the oil-stained concrete. She twisted, heart beating. Rusk worked on one hand holding the car's frame while the other wielded the welding rod. Amelia crept towards him, pulling the double-barreled pistol from her hip. She came up a car length away and took aim, hesitated, then lowered the gun. Rusk had come to Amelia's cell a few times before, breaking one of Sawtooth's laws with scraps of food and kind words. She'd had no choice with Green. Perhaps this time she could save some blood being spilt. Amelia sidled to Rusk, gripping the pistol's barrels, nearly falling backwards as she raised the heavy weapon overhead. Rusk paused his welding and turned. The wooden handle cracked against the side of his head. He grunted as he tumbled, and Amelia clambered over him, kicking off the goggles from Rusk's face, catching his nose in the process. Wait! Rusk grunted, moustache bloody. Amelia brought the handle down, whacking Rusk's forehead against the floor. He went still. She turned the pudgy man onto his side, relieved to see he was still breathing bloody bubbles through his nose. She angled Rusk's body, preventing the trails of blood trickling into his throat. That was about all she had for first aid knowledge. It was the first time she'd saved a life, Amelia reflected as she ran between two workbenches towards the garage exit. Then again, she'd been the reason his life was in danger, so not a great start. A cavernous mouth sat ahead. The exit of Sawtooth's rock, the metal parasite infecting its red dirt host, sat gaping open. Underneath a starlit purple sky, the open expanse of desert beckoned. A strange feeling twitched at Amelia's cheeks. She was smiling. Hey, Rusk, forgot to tell you. The fuck? Fuse had returned. Amelia ran harder, making for the closest vehicle to the exit. A big, clunky car with armour she couldn't quite remember the name of. A Humver? The first line of defence stood ready at the entrance in case of raiders. Not that there were likely to be any. Sawtooth had told Amelia his imperial borders stretched far beyond her wildest imaginations, and that his enemies were terrified of even the mention of his name. The Humver used to belong to some unknown army. A few flecks of blue paint still speckled on the sides where the desert sands hadn't stripped it off. Amelia pulled the driver's door open as quietly as possible. The inside was surprisingly spacious, 
and she dropped into the driver's seat, scooting low. Hughes unwittingly followed Amelia towards the exit, voice creeping closer as he talked into his smart gauntlet. Roscoe's down a bloody. The bitch must have made a run for it through the garage. No need to worry, though. Only desert out there. Gather a few of the lads, and we'll start searching with bikes. Amelia held her breath, holding the door ajar. Maybe Fuse would take Rusk to the medical room. Yeah, I'll wait here. When would she stop expecting life to be easy? Amelia sat up, shut and locked the door with a big clunk. She chose the Humber for one simple reason. It always had the key in it. After all, who would dare steal directly from Sawtooth? She hoped the driving part would come naturally to her. She twisted the key. The engine roared to life, its growls echoing off the garage walls. Amelia felt tingles as the mechanical rumble vibrated through her. This was no fantasy. No long-repeated dream to fill the endless nights and terrifying days. She was actually doing it. There she is, Fuse shouted pointlessly. Amelia pushed the pointer stick to the D symbol like she'd seen the men do before, had made sure to memorize it for this very moment. She pushed down the accelerator, her foot barely reaching the pedal. The seat was too far back. She yelped as the car leapt forward and swerved right, slamming into the wall. Her head whipped and banged against the horn, making the Humber honk in protest. Should have worn a seat belt. Amelia sat up sluggishly, head buzzing the Humber's interior spinning around her. She fumbled with a sore hand, buckled herself in. A face with a narrow jaw and large brow suddenly appeared at the driver window, a triumphant gleam in its eyes. Amelia jumped back as Fuse smiled at her. Got you now, girl, came the voice, muffled by tempered glass. You've an appointment with Sawtooth for being a cheeky bitch. Don't worry, we have time to play together first. Just you, me, and some new toys of mine prepared specially for you. He pulled the door handle. It didn't budge. Fuse's face switched from menacing grin to dumbfounded open mouth, slow on the uptake as always. Amelia realised she was being slow too, staring at her would-be tormentor. World slightly more stable now, Amelia tore her eyes from Fuse's and shoved the stick to R. She struck her foot down, and the car jolted backwards. Fuse yelped as he did the same, managing to pull away just in time from the spinning wheels and hurtling wing mirrors. Amelia pushed the other pedal and stopped the Humber before it slammed into the fuel truck. She rammed the stick back to D and aimed the wheel, the tires crunching beneath. She pressed the accelerator, and the Humber sprang forward again, out of Fuse's grasp, through the exit and into the sands beyond. Amelia pushed the brake, stopping the car with a sudden skid on the sand. She couldn't just leave. The bikes would catch her on the open plain. She had to delay them. Amelia left the engine rumbling on, unbuckled her seatbelt and clambered to the back seats. Climbed. Fuse's puzzled face gazed from the garage, his hand frozen on a gym buggy's side. His eyes widened as he realised what she was planning. Amelia bared her teeth at him, then... With both hands, gripped the handles and pivoted the Humver's blaster turret towards him. She pulled the trigger and the turret shuddered violently against her bruised hands as it let loose a black, shining blast towards the garage. Fuse dived out of the way as the shot exploded against the buggy, smashing its armoured side and sliding the whole vehicle back a metre. Amelia was thrown by the recoil, and her waist whacked against the Humber's roof, ghost of the blaster shot's explosion ringing in her ears. Her hands throbbed from the turret's harsh kickback, but she forced herself to grab the handles again. Ignoring Fuse, she swung the barrel left, aimed at the chain, holding up the men's second line of defence. Quidel once called it a fancy name, something like Portycully. All she needed to know was that it was a big gate. She fired the turret, letting another blast hurtle through the air. The black mass of energy ripped into the roll of chain hanging above the gate. It sheared the metal apart, spewing loose chain links and red rock. A rolling, echoing crash resounded as the gate fell, wedging itself at an angle between the floor and its other straining half. 
Amelia turned her body ever so slowly, followed by her arms, and then the stubborn, steaming turret that got heavier by the second. As she lined up the second roll of chains with the turret sights, she saw movement. She ducked as something small whipped through her hair. Fuse's remaining shock darts pinged off the Humber's armour, crackling in anger at having missed their target. Amelia, still crouched, pulled the trigger. The weapon slammed into her shoulder and flung her back into the Humber's depths. The crash of the rest of the gate collapsing into place drubbed at her ears, then fell silent, replaced by a high-pitched whining. For the second time that night, the world spun. Amelia pushed herself up, collapsed as her left arm stayed still, the shoulder unresponsive. She hit the floor, whacking her eye against the metal. Amelia screamed, half in pain, half in anger at the constant abuse her body was receiving tonight. She was used to being beaten by others, not by her own mistakes. Using only her right arm, Amelia clambered through to the driver's seat and fell into it. She glanced at her limp left arm. The shoulder had popped out of its socket. Three of Fuse's backup arrived in the rear-view mirror, all trapped behind the gate's thick bars. She saw Fuse's face go red as he screamed abuse at the men. That sight alone brought back a triumphant surge within Amelia, a new rumble of life. The humver stick was still in D, its engine humming away. Amelia made sure to buckle herself in and pushed the accelerator with her shoe's tip, urging the car forward, steering with her one good arm. She drove, slowly at first, then faster and faster as the rock shrunk and the desert grew. Her left eye began to close as it swelled, her arm hung uselessly. Both hands throbbed, their bruised colour hidden beneath layers of dried blood. Amelia ignored it all and drove on into the dark night, the Humver's beams cutting a path over the sand. She had never felt happier.